Hey, would you please welcome another Texas Ranger player? He's in his sixth year uh, as a professional ball player, been a four time All Star. 2010 was the MVP, and he, along with uh, David, have played in two World Series. Please welcome Josh Hamilton. Josh, you staying warm? I cannot get warm. <laughs> And you know, I love to hunt, and I wish I had brought my coveralls. <laughs> hey, uh, let me give you a little rebuttal time. Uh, tell us about David Murphy, just as a teammate, uh, brother in Christ. I think, obviously, I love Murph a lot. Uh, but the biggest thing I, I've seen and learned from David um, is really how to love your wife, uh, the way he talks to his wife, um, the interest he shows in his wife. I'm going through some things right now where, you know, when you get married, you want the foundation of your marriage to be spiritual and of God. And I didn't wait to have sex, you know, before I was married. And so my, my foundation was sex. And so sex wasn't going right and the marriage wasn't going right. And so now, you know, you know talking to David and just going through uh, and watching him and hearing him on the phone, on the, on the bus, talking to his wife, I'm like, he sounds like a little little kid in elementary school, you know, just sweet and loving his wife. And, you know, I used to be like, Murph, what are you doing? Because I'm talking to my wife. And I thought he was talking to one of his kids, but, you know, just treasuring, treasuring his wife. Um, and just, you know, know she's your helpmate and respecting her and, and treating her like, you know, you know, Christ wants you to treat her. Thanks, Josh. Growing up in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, tell us just about life growing up for you. It was warmer. <laughs> you know what? I, I grew up um, always playing sports. You know, no matter what season it was, I was playing uh, you know, baseball, basketball, football, soccer, running track. You know, just very active kid. Um, and our family, that's all we did. My parents coached me, um, and that's what we loved to do. Uh, if I'd go to church, I'd have to and go to church with them, and, and it wasn't very often. But I believed in God, I knew who Jesus was, but I never really chose to follow. Um, baseball was life, sports were life. Um, you know, I got in high school, got drafted, everything was great. Uh, come back from my first year of rookie ball, and you know what, it was, uh, I had some experience in rookie ball, and, and I knew that uh, I needed to accept Christ. And I came back home with my aunt and uncle's living room and, and accepted Christ, but, but I didn't do anything to change. I didn't make that 180. I didn't start living. I knew Christ wanted me to live. Um, and then everybody knows the story. You know, played for a couple years in minor leagues. Um, got uh, in a car accident. Uh, instead of having that foundation of, of Jesus in my life, I did nothing to grow it, so it wasn't there. So I started searching for things. Started looking at drugs. Started hanging out tattoo parlors, alcohol. All these things uh, to try to fill that hole that was empty, which the Lord should have been filling if I'd allowed him to. And then, you know, suspensions from baseball. And then I really feel like I accepted Christ in my grandmother's back bedroom. When I was so broken, you know, I had already been married, but, you know, I was separated from my wife. She had a restraining order against me uh, just because she wanted to get me out of the house so she could sell it. And life was just chaos. And I remember looking in my grandmother's eyes coming out of the back bedroom high um, on drugs and just the pain and the hurt I saw in her face. It was unbelievable, you know, tears coming down her face. And I was high at the time, but God said, he opened my heart and cleared my mind and allowed me to see the pain of her on her face. And immediately I went in that back bedroom and just hit my knees and just begged for, you know, him to come to my life. And I totally surrendered everything. And that's the moment I feel like I really accepted Christ and made that official turn. Would you say uh, in your aunt and uncle's bedroom it was uh, more of a head knowledge? And then... Uh... Yeah, yeah, my aunt and uncle's house was, uh, you know, more of, uh, okay, I know Jesus is the way. Uh, I want to follow him, but I didn't do anything to grow. I didn't get in the Word. I didn't pray. I didn't fellowship with other believers. I didn't do any Bible studies, go to church, none of that. Uh, and you can't get close to God like that. One of the things, Josh, I really appreciate about your book is you don't blame anybody else. 
you take responsibility for your own choices and what happened to you. And just talk for a minute about the importance of us all realizing that we're sinners and we need to take responsibility for our own actions. Yeah. Yeah. We suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, I suck. Sorry, guys, I didn't mean to involve you tonight. Um, you know, and it's important. Um, you know, I, as a baseball player, the platform I have is unbelievable. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I'm not required to get up here and do this. I'm not required to come to the field and talk to the media. I'm not required to uh, take time with the fans, sign autographs. I'm not required to do any of that. I'm just supposed to show up, play a game, uh, help my team win. But I don't want to just do that. I want to use this platform as my mission field right now in my life. So every autograph I sign, I'll put scripture on. Uh, every chance I get to talk to a kid about Christ, I'll talk to him about it. Um, you know, uh, this just happened on this road trip. We were talking, or I was out in left field in uh, Minnesota. And you know, I've been in the big leagues my sixth year. And you know, people got a lot of stuff to wear me out about. Uh, they got a lot of ammunition. Uh, so you can imagine things I hear uh, people screaming at me and you know it was amazing because the Holy Spirit if you're open and receptive he'll, he'll speak to you at any moment any time and he'll use any uh, instance in your life to help you learn from that and so I'm, I'm in the outfield and we're beating Minnesota and I had to add we're beating Minnesota I didn't say Tigers <laughs> Minnesota Twins uh, and I was coming outfield, and I'm just getting worn out. I mean, they're, they're bringing up drugs, they're talking about my wife, my kids, just, it's crazy. And so the whole, and you know, I've always been good at ignoring, ignoring things, and the Holy Spirit says, uh, you know what? He said, you're suffering from Christ right now. He said, these are scoffers. These are people who want to bring your weaknesses up and throw in your face, just like Christ walking to his resurrected to his uh, hanging on the cross, carrying his cross, and people spitting on him, throwing things at him, and while he was hanging there, um, you know, calling him names and uh, mocking him. This is what Christ went through. A little bit, a little, little bitty bit of but it was just so impactful. As I'm now hearing these things, and the first game we had here, I was, it was the same thing. It's like, it's like I'm noticing it more. You know, I used to block it out, but now I'm noticing it. And when I'm noticing it, in between pitches, of course, I'm praying for people. You know, I'm not, you know, thinking, oh, you know, uh, you know, I don't like, my, I'm thinking other things, but, you know, uh, I just really am praying for them. You know, if you ever see me looking up and outfield when I'm standing there, it's because I'm praying. And, you know, praying for people. And it was, it was awesome to, for the Holy Spirit to show that to me. And it's meant a lot, this road trip. Hey, Josh, a lot of folks praying for you, too, right here in Detroit and uh, around the country. And so we're lifting you up in prayer, too. Thank you, guys. What um, What's the toughest ballpark for uh, fans getting on you? <laughs> All right. I always tell the truth, right? Uh, first game here was pretty bad. <laughs> none of us, none of us. You know, Baltimore is pretty rough. Um, you know, I played at, with Cincinnati, I played at Pittsburgh. You know, you got 12 year old kids screaming, you know, crackhead at you. Um, you know, it's just, and you know, when I hear the things in the past, and I think about it, well, that person either knows somebody that's going through uh, what I went through, or they themselves are going through it, or they have a family member or somebody that they love very much that they can't uh, get to figure it out. And so that's another reason, you know, I spend so much time with fans and just really take interest and make eye contact and look at people's faces and just speak from the heart and listen to their stories. Thanks, Josh. What is the verse you put on the, your ball when you sign? What verse do you put on? I put a lot of different ones. I try to memorize as many as I can to put different ones on there and, and put whatever uh, the Holy Spirit leads me to put on the balls. But, um, after not just Easter but Easter before, uh, the biggest verse that God brought to my attention, and it's cool when He shows you, and He tells you, you get there, and you're like, wow. Uh, so what I'm saying is, God's really cool. Um, 
Uh, First Peter 2.24, he himself bore our sin in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sin, but live in righteousness. By his wounds or his stripes we've been healed. And that sums it all up. It does, Josh, absolutely. Hey, Josh, thanks for being here today, and thanks for sharing your love with us. Fellow who's going to come and sing a song today. He wrote the song.